These are the water in the atmosphere notes. And water in the atmosphere is also known as precipitation. Let's talk about all the different forms of precipitation. Precipitation in any form of water that falls to the Earth's surface. So again, precipitation is any form of water that falls to the Earth's surface, no matter what form it's in. The types of precipitation. The type of precipitation that falls to the ground depends upon the formation process and the temperatures of the environment between the cloud and the surface. So essentially, if um, the air temperature above the surface of the earth is colder like if it's below 32 up in the atmosphere but it's above 32 down at the surface that might change what precipitation actually hits the ground there are five different types of precipitation you've got rain snow We're not quite as familiar with the snow this year unfortunately Hail, generally you get that um, during thunderstorms. Sleet and freezing rain. Um, I think a lot of people think that sleet and freezing rain are fairly similar, um, but we're actually going to find out about how they're different. With rain, rain develops when growing cloud droplets become too heavy to remain in the cloud, and as a result, fall toward the surface as rain. Rain can also begin as ice crystals that collect to form large snowflakes. And then as the falling snow passes through the freezing level into warmer air, the flakes will melt. So once those flakes melt, then it turns back into water and we call it rain. And then here's a picture of what's going on. You've got cold air down here at the surface, cold air up at the top. It all starts with snow. And then it's labeled as rain, but obviously that's snow because it says all starts with snow. Snow falls into warm air and then it melts down here, turning it into what we would call rain. Snow, everybody loves it. Snow is formed when ice crystals form from water vapor that is in the clouds directly above our heads. And that process is called sublimation. Again, when we go from a water vapor to a solid, that's sublimation. And then again, falling into cold air never melts on its way down. So we've got cold air at the top on the outermost uh, part of the, the troposphere where all the weather happens. It's cold up there. We've talked about that. And then as the precipitation starts to fall from the clouds, it's cold all the way down. So that's why when it gets down to us, it never melts, so it stays as snow. Hail. Here's a lovely picture of a whole bunch of hail left behind after a hailstorm. Hail is formed when updrafts carry raindrops upwards into extremely cold areas of the atmosphere. So essentially, um, the rain droplets come down out of the clouds, and then it's kind of like a vacuum. It sucks them back up to where they freeze. And then after they're frozen, then they fall to the ground. So once the raindrops merge up back up into the clouds in the atmosphere, they're going to freeze into solid balls. And then when the frozen clumps get too heavy, they fall back down to the earth. Hail can vary in size from the size of a small stone to that of a baseball. So you got to be really careful if they're calling for hail. It's always a good idea to take cover. Um, and a lot of the times they damage cars pretty good. And some people I've known to have to have gotten a new roof. For their house because of hail falling and damaging their roof shingles. Sleet. Sleet is frozen raindrops. Sleet begins as rain or snow and falls through a deep layer of cold air that contains temperatures below freezing 
that exist near the surface. So again, sleet is frozen raindrops, which I guess is why people think a lot of the times that it's freezing rain, but it's not. And then here's the picture for sleet. Rain that falls through is extremely cold layer and has time to freeze into small pieces of ice. So in the picture, you've got the cold layer at the top, always. It falls, warms up, snow melts, refreezes into sleet as it travels through the cold air. So it's cold, solid, melts and then hits the cold air closer to the surface, refreezes. So it, um, a lot of the times if it's sleeting, you hear people say it's pelting me because it's little solid pieces of frozen water. Whereas freezing rain is a bit different. Freezing rain is falling rain that cools below zero degrees Celsius, so below the freezing point, but does not turn to ice in the air. The water is what's called super cooled. And then when the raindrops hit anything, they turn to ice. So this is a picture of a chain link fence after freezing rain. So again, it falls as water, but then as soon as it hits this fence, it freezes to the fence, which is why we've got this lovely pattern. Humidity and relative humidity. Humidity is the amount of water vapor in the air. Ladies, a lot of times um, in the summer, when we have these real humid days, uh, your hair kind of fluffs out. Or gentlemen, I guess you can have the same problem too. Um, but when your hair gets real poofy on a humid day, it's because there's so much water vapor in the air. Relative humidity is the measure of the amount of water vapor that the air is holding compared to the amount it can hold at a specific temperature. So that's sort of a really confusing definition, but let's delve into it a little bit further. When the air is holding as much moisture as it can, it's said to be saturated. You think about a sponge. When you fill up the sponge with as much water as it can hold, and then you turn off the water, and you just kind of hold the sponge, it's kind of leaking water. Whereas if you squeeze it out, it's still going to be moist, but it's not going to be full of water, so it won't be saturated. Whereas when it's full of water and then all the water's falling out of it, it's saturated because it can't hold any more water. So taking a look at the graph, the blue is the temperature, the red is the relative humidity, and here early in the morning, the temperature is dropping overnight. And then as soon as we hit daylight, the temperature starts to increase. We hit noon, 6 p.m., it must be getting dark because our temperature is going down again. Now looking at the humidity, the humidity is increasing overnight. And then as soon as the sun rises, the humidity starts to decrease. We're decreasing, decreasing. And then after dark, the humidity starts to increase again. Think about why that might happen. In the cool of the morning, the air can't hold as much moisture. We often have dew on a summer morning, just when the grass is wet overnight but it hasn't rained. Once the air has warmed, the relative humidity drops since the air cannot hold any more moisture. Um, so again, if we think about the graph, the temperature is increasing because of the sunlight, whereas the relative humidity is decreasing. Um, maybe you've heard the expression of as the temperature goes up, the humidity is going to burn off because when the temperature goes up, the air can't hold as much moisture. So everybody's seen what forms on the side of your glass. Um, when you pour yourself a cold drink, you've got ice in your cup, and then this stuff forms called condensation. The cold air around the glass causes a lower temperature at which the air is saturated. So again, think about the sponge, the saturation. The air can't hold any more water, 
So then at that point, the temperature at which the air is saturated and condensation takes place is called the dew point. So this is going to be really important for you to remember when we get back into class and we do the lab. Now we're going to move on to talking about clouds. You ever just looked up at the clouds? Why do we have clouds? Why are there different shapes of clouds? What can they tell us about the weather? We'll find out some of these answers and maybe you already know some of them. Clouds form as warm air is forced upward. As the air is forced upward and it expands, it cools. So we know that as air warms up, it's going to expand. And then it's saying it's going to cool. So when it starts to cool, that's when the clouds get to form. As the air cools, the relative humidity reaches 100%. And then think about what's going to happen when the relative humidity reaches 100%. It's going to rain. Water vapor begins to condense in tiny droplets around a nuclei. So a typical condensation nucleus, we're talking a little tiny speck of dust, salt, smoke, anything that these water droplets can adhere to, the water vapor can adhere to, then you get to actually form more and more and more molecules of water together. You've got when it's about this size in a cloud and then a large cloud droplet are getting bigger until it can't hold itself up in the cloud anymore and then imagine you'd have this whole area filled up with a typical size raindrop. Cloud types. We know that there are many different cloud types but there are sort of three main ones um, and we're going to classify the clouds by their shape, their height, and then sometimes their rain capacity. So with the three main shapes, we've got stratus, cumulus, and cirrus clouds. And then we'll find out some more about each one of them. Stratus clouds form a smooth, even sheet, and they usually form at low altitudes, so not very high up in the atmosphere. When air is cooled and condenses near the ground, a stratus cloud known as what forms? On the ground. How can you have a cloud on the ground? Fog is a cloud on the ground. A stratus cloud right on the ground. Stratus, um, if we think about strata back from last semester, we talked about rock strata, it's just a layer. So stratus clouds are essentially just looks like a layer right on the ground for fall. Cumulus clouds are masses of white, puffy, often flat based clouds and they form when air currents rise. They can be associated with both fair weather and then when these clouds get really tall, they're also associated with thunderstorms. Cirrus clouds are high, thin, white, feathery clouds containing ice crystals. I also think they look like just little wispies, like if you were to pull a cotton ball apart. That's what these remind me of. And they are associated with fair weather, which essentially means good weather, but they might indicate approaching storms. Sometimes when you have a front move through, these will preclude those big cumulus storm clouds. And then to talk about the clouds by their height, the prefix of cloud names can describe the height of the cloud base, so where the cloud starts, essentially. 
Zero means high clouds that are above 6,000 meters. I do think that the book says 7,000 meters, though, so we just know. Zero means high, essentially. And then alto, if you think about um, in chorus, an alto sort of sings the middle range. Alto is the middle elevation clouds between 2,000 and 6,000 meters. And then strato, just like fog is a low cloud to the ground. Strato is just a layer that's low, close to the ground, below 2,000 meters. And then the rain clouds. Nimbus clouds are dark clouds associated with precipitation. So make sure you remember this. It's going to be important. When a nimbus cloud is a towering cumulus cloud, it's called a cumulonimbus cloud. As we've got this white, puffy cloud, but it's also very dark. So, nimbus for storm, cumulo for the white, puffy. And these are those thunderstorm clouds. So again, thunderstorm clouds, cumulonimbus. Make sure you know that. 